The past month and a half, we discussed viable options for the self-publishing your books. However, is there a better option? More importantly, can we find one way that doesn't include as much money for the middleman? Let's talk about these three very viable options in Gumroad, PayPal, and Stripe. Stay tuned. What's going on? It's Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing, self-publishing books. And we're going on with this whole comparison series. But before we do dive into that, I want to let you know there's a very special project that's on my mind. It's called Book Rescue. And part of Book Rescue, we're working with a young adult fantasy author named Robert G. Culp, and we're going to help him grow his readership and getting more email subscribers, but we're also going to help out another 100 fantasy authors in a fantasy author giveaway. And we've had many collaborators across the board from everything from Reign of Reads to Author Platform Rocket to of course yours truly here with a combined reach of over 300,000 fantasy readers. Wow. You want more details? If you are a fantasy author, go check, take a look at it at dalinks.com slash fantasy giveaway. The deadline folks, it's February the 28th. If you miss it, sorry, it's kind of a one-time thing unless I otherwise work with a fantasy author again somewhere down the road on Book Rescue. All right, let's talk about this. Why Gumroad versus PayPal versus Stripe? This seems like the most unlikely comparison. Like it doesn't, almost doesn't make sense. But on paper, it doesn't make sense. But if you hear me out, you'll find out why I feel that these are very viable options. Do they even publish books? Well, <laughs> yes and no, right? Not in the traditional sense of, say, a KDP or an Ingram Spark or anything else like that. But for something like Gumroad, you actually do have ebook distribution. For places like PayPal and Stripe, it's just simply a payment interface. Now, they're all free to use, kinda, through essentially like a revenue share model of sorts. And it's a smaller revenue share than what you would do, say, for instance, over on KDP, because Kindle Direct Publishing will give you 70% of each sale of your ebook if you price between $2.99 and $9.99. Anything outside of that, that's 35% you're gonna get. And I'm gonna tell you, it's a huge difference with Gumroad, Stripe, and PayPal. Huge, huge difference. So let's start it out with what's Gumroad. It's a digital marketplace for selling digital services such as ebooks, memberships, courses, and other digital services. Did I say digital services enough? I probably didn't. I'm just going to say it one more time. Digital services. All right, there you go. Uh, I want to share a little bit of a story. A good friend of mine, her name's Ashney Christ. She actually has a very successful platform on Twitch. And she also has a great and successful channel over on YouTube. And about a few years ago, she came to me and she said, hey, what's the best option out there for distributing eBooks? She wasn't concerned about print books and she didn't care about audiobooks. All she wanted to do was eBooks. I told her about Kindle Direct Publishing. And when I told her 70% commission, if it's priced between $2.99 and $9.99, she was appalled. She's like, why? Why are they taking that much if I'm going to price it higher? Everyone wins if I price it higher. So she was kind of blown away that she would have to price her book. She wanted to do it about $20 to $30. She felt it was very premium content. But you can't do that on KDP because they end up penalizing you and giving you 35%. And even on top of that, she even looked at it and goes, even in a best case scenario, 70%, that doesn't make sense to me because I have the following. And that's why these options make the most sense because if you have a little bit of a following or you have options that you reach people off of Amazon's platform or off Barnes & Noble or Apple or Kobo or so on and so forth. When she launched, it was absolutely incredible made five figures within the first week in launching. Now you can see why she wanted to go through an avenue that took the least and gave her the most. And Gumroad was that option. Now see, I've had some other peers that have offered other products on the platform, even yours truly. I've used Gumroad before and continue to use it. And they've made anywhere from a couple bucks to a few hundred bucks to tens of thousands of dollars. And I don't know anybody who's made, you know, six figures or more. Maybe I do, but I'm just not aware of it. But either way, you can see there's quite the opportunity on the Gumroad platform. They host everything for you for free. No, there, there is an asterisk there. They used to have a premium option, but 
they more recently took that premium option back because it was free or premium. And if I remember it was like premium option might've been like five or $10 per month. And then you would end up having less fees involved with each one of the transactions. But they more recently kind of said, you know what, we're just going to do one option. And I'm going to share about that in a little bit later because it's like a tier based system. So hang in there. We'll get to that because I want to make sure we're, we're comparing apples to oranges here across the board. Now, self-fulfillment options beyond something like say Gumroad, let's say you want to pull out that middleman. You don't like the royalty percentage. You don't like Gumroad for whatever reason. Well, PayPal and Stripe are two very viable options. However, they do come with their share of limitations. Can you keep the customers on these platforms? Absolutely. But one platform outperforms the others. I'm going to talk about that one. That one is Gumroad. This is cool. I like this. Now, if you're the type of person that can't afford to get a good email marketing service, um, you know, maybe Merrill or Light isn't cutting it for you with their free thousand subscribers or MailChimp isn't cutting with their 1500 subscribers for free. You're wanting something that will just hold it all in one place. Gumroad essentially has email marketing integration in their platform. So once a customer purchases a product of yours on Gumroad, they become a customer that you can contact through emails. I think that's kind of cool. I think it's awesome. So you don't have to have a separate service. You can literally use that for everything that you need. And here's the cool thing. It includes segmentation and automation. These are things that you normally expect from a email marketing platform, like a MailerLite, like a MailChimp, like an Infusionsoft, all those other ones. Wow. I didn't know about this until my wife had stumbled on it and had shared it with me. And I was just blown away. I was like, oh my gosh. For instance, I have my free kids book interior templates and no content interior templates over on Gumroad available. I had made just one template originally available. And then I upgraded and I added some additional templates on there. I sent a push notification out to roughly about 400 people. And you can't imagine my entire email inbox was flooded with emails of people picking up additional products. Pretty cool, right? All I had to do was send out an email broadcast. And the cool thing is I could actually segment it down to specific customers for specific products that they maybe purchased product A, but they haven't gotten product B. So I would send that email out to them. I just think it's absolutely brilliant. Now, PayPal and Stripe. To their credit, they have almost globally been recognized by almost everyone around the world. Now, there are some limitations, obviously, but when it comes to email marketing integration, not so much. Yes, you get your customer's email. In fact, something like Stripe or even PayPal will have a customer profile that it creates. I find that Stripe has a more robust, dynamic, flexible feature for customer um Profile, PayPal's a little bit more like, this is the person's name, that's their email address, that's it. But unless you disclose from the start, that means before they check out through PayPal or Stripe, unless you tell them, hey, I'm gonna be using your email for email marketing purposes, it's not a good idea. In fact, I just honestly wouldn't even recommend taking an email and using it from PayPal or Stripe. You know, the only time I email a customer through PayPal and Stripe is if there was some type of an error. Maybe they purchased a product that I thought, oh, this will probably be a better fit or I've had to refund them. That's it. I don't ever reach into that list of people that are inside my customer uh, profile section. I don't reach out to them and say, oh, I've got this product coming out. Doesn't work that way. Gumroad does. Now that's not to say that Gumroad is far superior to either of these other two options, right? Don't just tune out because these other two options need to be considered. They are not an email marketing platform, yes. The only function that they serve as is a payment processor. So what does this process look like for all three of these options? Gumroad, super intuitive. I mean, absolutely dead simple. Yes, you have a little bit more that you have to set up than say, for instance, if you were to go through KDP, because KDP 
integrates with Amazon and they know how to put together their product pages. So they ask for specific things. Whereas Gumroad's kind of like, all right, you're going to fill in the blanks here and you got to start to use a little bit of intuition, a little bit of common sense to put together something that's going to be enticing, putting in their proper copywriting, things like that. Here's the cool thing though with Gumroad, they can host your file. So if you got your ebook, you just go ahead, hand it over to them. So you don't need to actually be available for this. And actually the other two options to a certain extent as well. You can use any number of file types on there. However, I'd recommend PDF. The reason I recommend PDF is they actually have a specific option you can tick off when you're getting ready to publish that ebook. And it's where the customer watermark is gonna be placed in the front of the ebook. Meaning that if for some reason, Someone purchases your book and they decide they're going to go ahead and distribute it out to everybody. Well, this is mildly, notice they say mildly, mildly mitigates piracy issues because it has put essentially that watermark of that customer. And so if that happens to kind of go out there, you've found your culprit, you've found the person and you caught them red hand. And now I don't know if there's like a digital watermark of sorts that keeps the customer's um, information on that. So for instance, if they remove that first page for whatever reason, can it still be seen behind the scenes? But I'll assure you that pirates, they want something, they're just going to take it. They're going to take it. They don't care about your watermark, but it's kind of nice to know that they have that option available. And it does kind of, like I said, it mitigates some of those smaller time pirates, if you will. In other forms of eBooks, if you go with EPUB or Mobi for some reason, or Doc or DocX, something like that, I would recommend including a README file of some sort. Explain how to read that device on desktop and mobile. Just a very simple, brief you know, instruction. So for instance, if you want someone to read it on Kindle Paperwhite, you can always be able to put together a tutorial. By the way, I've got a video for that over on my main channel, dailylinks.com slash YouTube. Go on over, check, take a look at that. I show people how to load up. That it's, it's easier than you know. But either way, you want to give the customers everything they need because the problem is you can probably deliver that file to them, but they're going to go, okay, I bought this. What do I do with it? I don't want to sound negative when I say this, but assume, assume the worst in your customers. Assume that you're getting someone who is opening a mobile phone for the first time ever in their lives. Put it all together because a happy customer at the end of the day is going to make for a happy business. So put the readme file in there. You will thank me. Uh, popular choices to kind of consider is Kindles or Apple Books um, or even just reading it from the desktop. So promote the link that you're going to get be given for your product page everywhere you can imagine. In fact, they actually have some social sharing options that you can put in place. That's kind of nice. And the part that I like here you can include upsells or complementing products on the same page. So let's just say, for instance, I've got my Werebear Shapeshifter series and I've got book one. I send someone over to Gumroad. On that page, it better have book two, book three, or book four somewhere mentioned in there because then it gives the opportunity for the customer to go, ooh, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and buy these other three because screw it, you know, I'm already here, might as well do that. I think it's a really nice feature and you can upsell them or you can give it to them for free. Either way, it's kind of a nice way to even further segment an audience on Gumroad because if they get that upsell, you know that they might be a motivated buyer who's more willing to invest a little bit more in you. Now, PayPal and Stripe though, let's go ahead and walk it back. What does their process look like? Well, you're going to usually need something beyond PayPal and Stripe. You're going to probably need a website, social media presence, and an email list. Though I wouldn't recommend putting a checkout link for PayPal or Stripe inside your email newsletter because that will result in some spam complaints to some issues. What I'd say is instead, if you're going to do an email marketing, send out people from the email to a landing page before they go to that checkout because People want to kind of know what they're buying before they get into it. Even if you've explained it ad nauseum within your email marketing, it still makes more sense that they go into a landing page and they feel more in control. Whereas you toss them into a checkout, they're going to go, whoa, whoa, is this a scam? Is this, this should I know? Uh, I, yeah. All right now, when it comes to hosting the file, for PayPal and Stripe, you're going to have to host the file. You can create essentially a landing page 
and then toss in a PayPal or Stripe checkout link. Now I can go through a full tutorial of this, but honestly, I think you understand. You just Google it up, look it up on YouTube. It is really simple in putting together a PayPal or Stripe checkout link. Um, I recommend it. You know, there's nothing worse than agreeing to buying something without fully knowing what it is again on a specific landing page. So make sure that that button has some type of context or reason it's there. Besides, it's more professional. I mean, someone just shows up on a page, there's a checkout link. You're gonna be like, what am I supposed to do with this? And what if for some reason someone finds it through search and they stumble on it and it's just got a checkout button? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Now you're gonna need to probably some type of a cloud drive. Do a little bit of research ahead of time about direct download links for your preferred cloud service. So if it's, uh, for instance, Google Drive, uh, you want to look that up, or OneDrive, or Dropbox, find out you can do direct downloads. Um, there is a small issue. Some pre people bring this up. What if people share the link? You'll know. I mean, you're going to find out pretty quick if you're getting a ton of downloads or traffic through your specific download section. So if that's the case you'll be able to shut that link down and redo a new one. Now, this has never happened to me, but that doesn't mean it won't happen to you. Now, I did a little bit of digging and I discovered something interesting and I wanted to go further into this, so I can't confirm this 100%. Stripe does digital downloads as well. They actually call it easy digital downloads. And I was like, huh. And from what they were implying in specific video, that they will hold those files for you and deliver for you because their belief is sending your customer to different sites multiple times tends to kind of create a lot of friction for that person to want to purchase your product. So there's gonna be a lot of drop off. So their thought is come here, pay here, get your stuff here and don't have to go anywhere else. This has got a huge advantage over PayPal because when they go to check out on PayPal, click, boom, they've done it. You could probably just insert a link to where the direct download is or maybe even a, an email that they'll go ahead and ping you and say, hey, send my ebook right on over this way, which I wouldn't recommend. But either way, there's a bit of an advantage over PayPal if this easy digital downloads is as easy as it says it is. Let's discuss royalties. Technically, they're payments since it's not the traditional sense of royalties necessarily. Now, Gumroad is a tier-based system based on lifetime earnings. For $0 to $999, you get 9%. They will do a fee of 9%, that is. So that means you're getting 91% plus a 30 cent transaction fee. By the way, the 30 cent transaction fee is going to apply indefinitely. You'll always have 30 cents pulled out. Um for any sales made above $1,000, but below 10K is 7% plus a transaction fee. 10 grand to 100 grand is 5%. 100 grand on up to a million dollars is 3%. And last but not least, anything above a million dollars is 2.9%. You're making a million dollars and you've hit that lifetime achievement. Congratulations, that's freaking fantastic. Now, PayPal's a little bit different. No, they just have a flat system. 2.9% plus a 30 cent transaction fee. Now you're probably saying to yourself, wow, that's way better than Gumroad. I'm gonna give you that, but think about all the extra perks that you get through Gumroad's Avenue. Sure, maybe you're gonna start out and stay at 9% for quite a while. And let's just say, for instance, you make between $1,000 to $10,000 and you're gonna end up getting a 7%. And even then that's just a little bit higher than say that PayPal transaction fee, which is 30 cent by the way, and the 2.9%. So you gotta kinda of weigh your pros and cons and think about some of those features. And by the way, PayPal, you gotta read the fine print, international orders, it's 4.4% plus a fixed fee based on the specific region. I tried to find out what that fixed fee was, but it just, it got a little bit messy. All that to say this, international orders almost always cost more outside the US. Stripe, again, theirs is 2.9% plus a 30 cent transaction fee. And something to think about is that easy digital downloads. So to me, I think it almost slides a little bit more in favor towards Stripe here on this one because they have the easy digital downloads there. PayPal doesn't have that. It's a better commission rate than say, for instance, if you start out on Gumroad 
And Lord knows getting a million dollars in sales isn't going to be something you're going to get overnight. And if that's the case, you're probably not looking at platforms like Gumroad. And I'll talk about some alternative platforms later on here. Now, how do you get paid out? Gumroad, this is fun. It's a $10 minimum payment threshold. They pay out through direct deposit in 29 different regions. If you're not inside one of those 29 regions, they just pay you by PayPal. Pretty funny, right? We're talking about PayPal, comparing it with Gumroad. And Gumroad uses PayPal or direct deposit. I'd recommend direct deposit if you can do it. It would be a smart decision. Uh, they pay you every Friday. That's cool. That right there, honestly, I think every self-publisher out there would probably agree with me. It would be super nice if we could get paid a lot sooner. Because you look at platforms, say, for instance, like KDP, they pay you 60 days after the close of the month. 60 days after the close of the month of a sale. Gumroad, guess what they do? They pay you out one week after. Boom. I just got all my stuff right here. I paid, like, say, for instance, someone got a book on Monday. This coming Friday, I'm going to see that payday. A big plus, in my opinion. I like that fact. Now, PayPal, they pay out when you want. They usually just kind of hang on to that money until you decide to what to do. They do have some integration with bank accounts, direct deposits, something really, really nice. You can just transfer it over there for free, or you can do an expedited version. And I think it like runs like a couple bucks, depending on how much you are transferring. You will have to manually request it. I have not found automation at all to where, so for instance, someone makes payment and it sends it over to my bank account soon after. I kind of like to have that because I'm not using PayPal as a bank account. Something to think about. Now, when it comes to Stripe though, they pay out when you want, kind of like PayPal. They have direct deposit integrations and here's the big plus. They have automated deposits. There's a bit of a few day delay because they make sure that the money clears properly. That seems reasonable. I am not against that option. Hey folks, as we start to wrap up today's podcast, of course, I want to give a big shout out to all of you fantasy authors out there. If you really want to explosively grow your readership and join something that's going to be absolutely fantastic, something massive, join the fantasy author giveaway at dalelinks.com slash fantasy giveaway. The deadline, by the way, folks, is February 28th. And just so you know, the money that is put into this goes directly back into ads and serving out this giveaway to readers. It's going to be absolutely magnificent. Please be part of it. February 28th, 2022 is the deadline. My final thoughts. I think you can kind of tell I'm a bit of a Gumroad fanboy. Uh, give Gumroad a shot. Kick around. Even if you don't plan on using it, it's kind of fun. Play around with it. Uh, consider using PayPal or Stripe for checkout options. Stripe's a bit more flexible than, say, PayPal. The direct downloads, uh, that's kind of cool. That's going to keep people on your site, not moving around. I kind of think that's a big plus. Other potential avenues for you to consider include places like Payhip, Etsy, WooCommerce, Shopify. You don't always have to rely on Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing to become successful in this business. There's no way for me to tell you what your idea of success is, but I can tell you that as long as you're putting your book in other people's hands, then you're definitely on the right path. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat. Read the fine print on any site that you go to. And before you fully launch a product out there into the world, test it. Iron out any wrinkles before you make it fully public because if you've not done it before, then chances are very likely some things might go south, might go a little wrong. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Next week, we're going to be talking about ACX versus Findaway Voices. Who is the best audiobook publisher? To get advanced access to all podcasts, visit dailylinks.com slash YouTube podcast one week before the audio content publishes. In the meantime, this has been Self Publishing with Dale. And I will chat with you next week. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Special shout out to my channel members for both the podcast channel and the main channel. Without your support, some projects we do at Self-Publishing with Dale would be much harder to fund. If you want to contribute to the cause, visit dalelinks.com slash memberships for details and get your on-screen shout out at the end of each broadcast. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you soon.